And Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu, Nasta'inuhu, Nasta'firuhu, Nahudu Milahi, Nishururi, Anfusina, Wimin, Sayyidi, Ati, Amanina, Mingahitihi, Lahu, Fala, Mudin, Lalahu, Wamin, Yudilin, Fala, Hadi, Lahu, Wa Ashadu, Ella, Ilaha, Inna, Allahu, Wahdahu, La, Sharika, Lahu, Wa Ashadu, Enna, Muhammadan, Abduhu, Wa Rasuluhu, صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه تسليما كثيرا وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار what has been collected by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim in their Sahihain is a tremendous hadith we want to talk about here today, inshallah, azawajal. It is a long hadith, a long hadith. We're only going to take the middle portion of the hadith. But I would hope that all of you would go back because of your hirs and your ghira and your desire to know more about your deen, that you will go back to read the whole story. I'm sure Many of you have heard about this story. And this is a haditha that shook the Muslim community during the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to its very core, to its very core. And very seldom will you find a masjid in this dunya, in Somalia, in Kenya, in the UK, in Mecca, in Medina. Very seldom will you find a masjid where the Muslims took the tafaqqah and they understood this, this, this particular hadith so as not to have the problems repeated of what happened during that time. It is the hadith that the ulama of al hadith they called it Qissatul Ifq, the great slander of our mother, Aisha, radiallahu anha wa ardaha. As I mentioned, we're only going to deal with the middle of the hadith. In the beginning, there's a lot to be said, and after the end, there's a lot to be said, but half of an hour doesn't give us enough time. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on a trip, and from his sunnah, is that when he used to go on trips, even if it was for jihad, he would bring his wife with him, or his wives with him, a sign, a proof, and an indication of his shuja. He was a brave man. Today, if the Muslim had to go by himself in order to put his life on the line, he wouldn't do it. The Nabi used to bring, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most beloved people to him with him. He brought Aisha with him on this particular trip. When they were coming back from the journey, Aisha radiallahu anha went to answer the call of nature, akramakum Allah, and they used to carry her in a haudij, so the people thought she was still inside because she was young. So the army left, and Aisha was left in the middle of the desert. There was another man from the companions, his name was Mu'attal, Safwan ibn Mu'attal. Safwan ibn Mu'attal. It was his job, radiallahu anhu, to always come after the army, to look to see if anything was lost, and he would bring it with him to Medina. A clear sign from the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what is known as the Muslim has to make a tawakkul on Allah, but he ties his camel first, and then he makes a tawakkul on Allah. He doesn't throw his issues and this throw caution to the wind, and he says, I'm going to make a tawakkul. The Nabi made that man, his job was, you come after the army and you look, if anything was left, you bring it to us. That man came and he saw Aisha radiallahu anha by herself. He didn't say anything other than inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. This is a musibah. The wife of the Nabi, the Umm al-Mu'mineen, the daughter of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, a Muslimah who's not a regular Muslimah, left by herself in the desert. This is a musibah. He didn't say anything. He made his camel get down, she got on the camel, and he came into the city of Al-Medina. When they came into Al-Medina in broad daylight, just like now, broad daylight, the people saw the two of them coming into the city, the munafiqeen. And they're in every masjid, and they're in every Muslim community. Those who spy, 
those who are kuffar on the inside, but they show us Islam on the outside. It's not your job, it's not my job, it's not your responsibility to try to figure them out. It's not your job. You worship Allah Azza wa and Allah will protect us from them. He said in the Quran, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ They are the worst of the people. So they're going to be in the, in the lowest part of the hellfire. When the munafiqun saw Aisha coming into the city with Safwan ibn Mu'attal, they started to say, out of all the things they could have said, they said, they're making zina, they're having an affair, they're making fahisha. Instead of having husn al they said, making zina, making fahisha. The worst possible interpretation, that's the tariq and the sunnah of the munafiqin. Unfortunately, there were some Muslims from the companions, radiallahu anhum, who, when they heard this news, they began to say certain things. And they would say, did you hear what happened? And he would go and say, did you hear what happened? Did you hear what happened? Some of them spoke about it. Aisha said, radiallahu anha, when I arrived in Al-Medina, I was sick from the journey. I just became sick. So I stayed in my house for one month, 30 days, 29 days. The Prophet would come to me and he wouldn't spend any time in my house, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All he would say to me was, Kayfatikum. How you doing? And that's it. Kayfatikum. She said, I knew that there was a problem. 30 days and that's all he said to me? Because this was the woman, Ikhwani, you people, Ummat al Islam. When the companions asked Rasulullah, who's the most beloved person to you? He said, Aisha. This was his Habiba, his Mahbuba, Biman al Kalima. This was the lady, radiallahu anha, because of her youthful nature, because of her temperament. Sometimes she would get upset with the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anytime she got upset with him for some reason of her desires from the dunya, the Nabi would never ever repay her anger with anger. He used to always diffuse the situation and calm it down because of his extreme love for her. Not because he was under her thumb, but because of his extreme love. You show me in this masjid right now, a man, his woman, his wife gives him a hard time, and you see the vast majority of us, when our wives give us hard times, we deal with it by giving her a hard time back. But because of her position, she had a high position. She said all he would come and he would say was, Kayfatikum. She was loved by him, Mahbuba, Ladeh. And also, she was sick. And it's a well known fact any Muslim who reads about this seerah and the sunnah, Rasulullah has put a lot of emphasis on how to be with the marda. Those of our family members who are sick, we have many ahadith telling us what to do and what not to do in, a, in an attempt to help them to convalesce, to get well. What to feed them, what not to feed them, how to be and how not to be. And here it is, his wife. And all he said, Kayfatikum. She said, after one month, I went out to answer the call of nature with Um Mizdah. She said that the lady almost <coughs> tripped over her jilbab. When she almost tripped over her jilbab, the lady said, Ta'is al Mizdah. May Mizdah, my son, may be destroyed. Aisha said, Do you say that about a man who participated in the war better? the biggest ghazwa known to Bani Adam. Did you say that about him? La ya Jews, they're from the best of Bani Adam. The mother said, you didn't hear what Ms. Dahu has been saying about you? She said, no, I didn't hear it. What did he say? And then the lady told Aisha the story. That people are saying that you committed zina. The people are saying that you made fahisha. And my son Ms. Dahu, who's a companion, radiallahu anhu ajma'in, he was part of the people from the Ummah who were saying that, spreading the news. Aisha said, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. For one month, the people are talking about me and about this issue. She said, I went home and I waited for the Nabi. He came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all he said to me after I knew what happened was, again, kayfatikum, how's your situation? She said, I couldn't take any more. I say, Ya Rasulullah, would you allow me to go to the house of my mother and my father, which is an important point for those of you who are married. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, yes, go to your mother and father. Go there. Because he knows whenever the Muslim woman has some drama, some problems, some static, it's only natural for her to want to go back to the house of her father, to get the support of those people who loved her. 
those people who protected her. She grew up in the house of a man and a woman, brothers and sisters, who loved and supported her. The Nabi did not say to Aisha, you a spoiled brat, you a little baby, you always, he didn't say that. He took in consideration her situation. Yes, go home, you need some support. She went back home. She said, I saw my mother, Um Ruman. I said to my mother, did you hear? Did you know about this news? Instead of the mother saying, yes, I heard about it, the mother gave her daughter some irshad, some toji hat. She said to her daughter, Ya Bunay, Ya Bunayya, Hawani ala nafsi, Kalla ma tujit imra'a radiyya mithluka, wa kanit laha dara'i ila akthirna alayha al-kalam. Very seldom will you find a lady as beautiful as you are. Our mother Aisha, for those who didn't know, she was a beautiful woman. Physically, she was an attractive woman. The Prophet used to call her Humaira, was her nickname, which means the white and illuminated one. She was an attractive woman. Her mother said never did there find a woman find herself as beautiful as you are, and she has co-wives, except that the co-wives will talk about her. So, take it easy, my daughter. Be careful about how you deal with this situation. She didn't want her daughter to become the recipient of more kalam. Take it easy how you deal with the situation in the society. She said, I couldn't believe it. My mother knew about it. I couldn't believe it. One month, nobody told me about it. I couldn't believe it. She said that one of the ladies from the Ansar came to visit her. They allowed that lady in. She said that that lady sat with her all day and all night. And all she did was cry and cry and cry and she couldn't sleep. And she said that, I thought that my bladder was going to become malfunctioned because of the excessive crying. Another point, the Ansari lady came and she supported Aisha radiallahu anha. She wasn't like the people of our community. For those of you who don't know Arabic, there is a word I want to share with you. We have to avoid this word. It is called shamata. Shamata. That's when a calamity befalls someone. Something bad happens to someone and you're happy. In our community, if something happens to someone, to another Muslim brother, sister, family, even relatives, when it happens, we want to employ. We want to have a, 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 a party as a result of that. The Nabi says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاهُمِهِمْ وَتَعَاطِفِهِمْ مَثَلُ الْجَسَدِ إِذَا اشْتَكَى مِنْهُ عَدُونَ تَدَاعَ لَهُ سَائِرُ الْجَسَدِ بِالْحُمَّ وَالْسَّهَرِ The example of the believer in his, in our community, is like the example of one body. If one part of the body hurts, he has a toothache, he has a migraine, he broke his foot, broke his toe, the whole body is going to suffer. What happens in Somalia, I, as an African-American, I can't say, I'm from America, that's not my problem. What happens in Syria, I can't say, I'm from America, that's not, that's not my problem. He's happy when he's happy, he's sad when he's sad, he's disturbed when he's disturbed, and so forth and so on. That's not the condition today. The lady from the Ansar came, she cried with Aisha radiallahu anha. She said, the next day, my father, my mother, the lady from the Ansar and me, we were in the house crying. The Nabi came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She didn't see the Prophet for a whole month. The Nabi sought permission to come in. They told him to come in. He started to give what appeared to be a khutbah. And alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu. And it's only four people there, in addition to the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna Muhammad, abdu wa rasul. Then he said, I'm about, ya Aisha, laqad balaghani anka, anki, kada wa kada. I heard about this and this concerning you. Wallahi in kunti bari'a fa sayubari'iki lah. Wa in al-mamti bi dhambin fa staghfiri lah wa tubi ilayhi. Fa in al-abd idha tarafa wa taba, taba Allahu alayhi. Aisha, I heard this and I heard that about you. I heard this and I heard that. If you are innocent, then Allah is going to exonerate you. Allah will prove that you're innocent. And if you were guilty and you touched this thing, or this thing touched you, this fahisha, then you have to make tawbah. And you have to ask Allah to forgive you. Not only that, but you have to come clean right now. You have to let us know. You have to expose yourself and let us know that you did it if you did this. Now the question is, 
in our religion, everybody here, in the first row, second row, in the back, Arab, non-Arab, man, woman, rich, employed, unemployed, everybody here is making sense. Look anywhere in any direction. Everybody here is making sins. Even the Kabair, even. But in our religion, everybody here has been commanded, don't, don't publicize your sin. The Nabi he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kullu Ummati Mu'afa Ilan Mujahirin Wa Inna Min Al Jihad An Ya'mar Al Raju Amalan Bil Layl Thumma Yusbihu Fayakshifu Allahu Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala فَيَسْتَرُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فَيَذْهَبْ فَيَقُولْ يَا فُلَانْ لَقَدْ عَمَلْتُ الْبَارِحَ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَكَذَا يَكْشِرُ سَتْرَ اللَّهِ All of my ummah will be forgiven. Everybody will be forgiven for their sins. Except those who broadcast. He said, and from broadcasting is the one who does a sin at night. He's watching something, listening to something, doing something that's haram. And then he comes and he says, hey, hey, so-and-so. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And he exposes, he exposes himself after Allah made him a store. Why would the Nabi tell Aisha, you have to admit it. You have to publicize what you did in front of us for, the four of us. You have to say something. The reason for that, Ikhwani, and this is a part of our aqidah. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Sayyid of Bani Adam, and he is the Khatam of the Anbiya and the Rasul, and he is the best human being. It is not permissible for him to be married to a woman who's a zani. It's permissible. A man committed zina in this masjid or other in this masjid. It's permissible if his wife found out about it to forgive him and then to cover it up and to keep going. It's permissible. She has to weigh the masada and the mafasi. A man found that his wife committed zina. Someone from the masajid. It's permissible for him. Keep going if he wants. He has to weigh the benefits and the harms. As for the Prophet and the Nabi, it's not permissible. It's haram and it's mustahil, not permissible. Allah mentioned in the Quran in an ayat that was revealed before this incident. Allah wants to take all of the dirt off of you, ya Ahl al Bayt. Allah wants to purify you totally. That's all of his women. Before this issue, Allah mentioned in the Quran, in the Quran, He mentioned in the Quran, Bad women are for bad men, bad men are for bad women. Is it my call for the Muslim who has his aqal? He himself doesn't want anyone to think or believe his wife is a zaniya. And he believes, he believes that the mother of the believers committed zina, the daughter of Abu Bakr committed zina. If any man's wife committed zina, that's an aib and an ar on that man himself, on his family, his kabila, him himself. How is a person going to believe as the people of Iran believe, as the people of some of them of Iraq believe? How is it possible that a person can believe? Aisha radiallahu anha committed zina. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Darab Allahu mathalan lilladheena amanu mraata nuhan wa mraata lut kanata tahta abdaini min ibadina salihain fa khanata huma fa lam yugni an huma min Allahi shay'a wa qeel utkhil al-nar ma al-dakhili Allah has given an example for the disbelievers. The wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut those two women, they were married to two of our righteous servants, under them, responsible for them. And they made khiyana. They made khiyana to their husbands. All of the people who gave tafsir of the Quran, they said, the khiyana here is not zina. The khiyana here is the two women, they didn't know what wala wal bara. The two women here, they used to help the kuffar over their two husbands who were from the prophets and the messengers. As a result of that, not knowing al wala wal bara as a result of helping the kuffar over Islam and the prophets, as a result, as a result of that, they're going to go to to the hellfire. As for making zina, hashad Allah, it's not possible. <coughs> when the Nabi came in, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he told her, "You have to admit." She said to her father, radiyallahu anha. She looked at her father and said, "Ajm anni Rasulullah." You, 
father, father, answer the Nabi. You raised me. You raised me to have Ifa and to have Izzah and Sharaf. You answer. Abu Bakr said, Ma adri ma aqul li Rasulillah. I don't know what I'm going to say. What can I say? I'm not saying anything. She couldn't believe it. She looked at her mother. Ajibi anni Rasulullah. Ummi, you, you. Answer the Nabi. Answer what he's saying. You answer my behalf. You're my mother. Aisha's mother said, like the father. I don't know what I'm going to say. What I'm going to say. He's your husband and he's Rasulullah. This is your father, my husband, and he's the best of Benny Adam after the prophets and the messenger. You think I'm going to put myself before him and it? What am I going to say? Aisha said at that moment I became angry. And my tears stopped coming down. Because she became angry for Allah. She became angry for the haq. She became angry in defense of herself. So she said, listen, I know this word that you people heard, what the people are talking about. I know that it found a place in your hearts. I know that. She said, wallahi, if I were to tell you that I didn't do it, and Allah knows that I didn't do it, then you people are not going to believe me. And if I told you that I did it, and Allah knows I didn't do it, you people are going to believe me. She said, I don't know anything better to say right now at this moment other than the words of the righteous slave. And then she called them Abu Yusuf. And then she read some eyes of the Quran. Abu Yusuf, Ikhwani, is Yaqub of the Quran. Allah didn't call him Abu Yusuf in the Quran. The Prophet in no hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, called him Abu Yusuf. But we know he's Abu Yusuf. She said, the reason why I called him Abu Yusuf is because I forgot his name was Yaqub. I was young and it was a fitna. And I was in the middle of the drama, which will give you an idea of how serious it was, how hot it was, how she was dealing with something. She said, I forgot Yaqub's name. And then she read the ayat of the Quran, where Yaqub said, Sabrun Jameel, Wallahu Musta'an. Allahu Musta'an, Alama Tasifun. I'm going to have beautiful patience, Yaqub said. And I'm going to seek Allah's help concerning what you people are saying and what you people are doing. That goes to show if when you, although Aisha was young, she used to take the Quran and she used to get strength from the stories of the Quran. She was attached to the book of Allah and the stories of the people in the Quran from the awliya of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not like the people today. Not like the Muslim Ummah today. Visit the Quran, deal with the Quran just in the month of Ramadan. If I have a baby, I want to name my baby a name. So I open up the Quran, close my eyes, and I put my hand on a, on a word, on an ayah. And then I call my, my son Sirat, because that's where my hand went. No, she took the Quran, what she knew of the Quran, to get strength from the Quran. But there's something more important than that. Something more important than that. This issue of one of those to show that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this problem is touching him. It's about him. It's about his honor. It's about his wife. It's about his, uh, his, his, uh, his household. Him, him. And yet the Nabi, he didn't put himself forward. He didn't put himself forward. When there was no revelation, when Allah didn't tell him what to do, he didn't make ijtihad. He didn't put himself forward. It's his problem. He could have said, I'm the Nabi, it's impossible. He didn't say anything because there were no ayats. There were no ahadith. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he just remained silent. In addition to that, when the companions saw that he didn't put himself forward, Abu Bakr and his wife, they didn't put themselves forward. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladheena amin, la tuqaddimu bayna yaday lahi wa rasulih. Taqullah. Don't put yourselves forward before Allah and His Messenger. How many other people today from our Ummah we put ourselves forward? In Aqidah, in Ibadah, in the Ayat, we put ourselves forward. In this city, I don't know how many messages are Milton King. You go to the Masajid, our brothers who are from Pakistan, and this is not a dig on Pakistani people. I'm telling you a reality. Birmingham, wherever you go, London, the vast majorities of, of the messages in this country, they believe in something that's called Allah's prophet is Hazir Nazir. That he is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's with us right now. He's in Kismayo. He's in Basaso. He's in Peking. He's everywhere with us. Wherever, he's everywhere. 
that issue of Aqeedah. Did Abu Bakr believe that? Did Umar Uthman Ali, did they believe that? Why put yourself forward in a, a serious issue like that? Ibadat of Islam. You go into the masjid, they lower the lights, they put bukhur, and the people make dhikr of Allah. Based on an ayah, Allah be dhikr lai tatmin al qulub. Huwa, 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 Allah, Allah, Allah. You ask, where is that? Where do you get that from? This is not to put anyone down. It's to say to the Ummah of Islam, don't put your soul forward when it comes to this religion. Wait, if there's a Dalil, Hadith, Quran, and the companions understood it that way, then we do that particular thing. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, after saying what he said, Aisha said what she said. She said, at that point, I laid back on the bed and I put the cover over myself and I went to lay down. She said, I had no doubt that Allah was going to protect me and exonerate me. And that's because of the meaning ayat of the Quran. Isn't Allah a love for a servant? Allah, Allah will protect those who believe. All of those ayat say, Allah is going to be enough for you over them. That ayat applies to you, 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 me. That ayat applies to everyone from the Muslims, any regular person. I'm a Bakr Zayd. What about Aisha from the ulama of the companions, the wife of the Nabi? She said, I had no, no doubt, no doubt Allah was going to save me. She said, when I lay down, I actually thought that the Nabi Sallallahu would see something in a dream. But after I laid down and I turned away, sweat started coming off of the face of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he started shaking and we realized revelation was coming down on him. Right now, Akhwani, as I speak in his masjid, it's hot in here and I'm talking. So I'm sweating because I'm exerting energy. She said that this hadith, this incident, happened in the winter time and it gets cold in Al Medina. She said that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started sweating because this was the effect and the impact of the Qur'an upon him. The revelation of the Qur'an was not easy on him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَسَنُلْقِ عَلَيْكَ قَوْلٍ ثَقِيلًا We're going to put on you, Ya Muhammad, a heavy statement. She said that he started sweating like the size of pearls. After he sweated and the ayah came down, he said, Ya Aisha, Shiri, Aisha, be happy. I have a bushra. Allah has cleared you. Allah has exonerated you. And then he started to read the 13th ayat from Surah An-Nur. Surah An-Nur, Ummah al-Islam, from Masjid al-Rawda. It is Nur. Who from amongst us sat down with his family to read Surah An-Nur? And the tafsir, just of those 13th ayat, the evil of hearing something and then repeating it. Allah said in the Quran, Tahsabunahu Hayyanin wa hu indallahi azim. You people think that this thing that is being said is something small? It's big with Allah. That someone would come and say about any Muslim person, he committed zina, she committed zina, and you're just spreading news. Talqunuhu, talqunuhu bi al sinatikum. Allah said, You took it with your tongues. Normally, the aqil, the aqil, He's going to sit there and he hears the speech of a person. He takes it with his ears. It goes in his mind, in his brain, in his heart. He sees, is it beneficial, harmful? If it's beneficial, he'll repeat it. If it's harmful, he'll keep it in and keep his mouth shut. If he doesn't know, benefit, harm, he says, I'm not going to talk about it. The way we are, all we have to do is hear. Fulan did this, Fulan did that, and here we are with the wife. Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? How would you feel if it was you? How would you feel if it was your daughter? From the sifat of the nisa, not only the nisa, but from the sifat is a tharthara, a tharthara. Inni ra'aytu akthara ahlin naam, a nisa. I saw the majority of the occupants of the hellfire are the women, more than anyone else. One of their characteristics is they just talk, they talk. It's not just women. But it's from the characteristics that the man has to avoid. The Aqil, Hakim, he hears it. He doesn't take it with his tongue. When it comes, it's juice it right up. That's not our religion. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, when the Prophet read the ayat to her, the 13th ayat from Surah Al-Nur, her mother and her father said, 
Kira Pumi in Arosurida. Kira, go to the Nabi. This is a happy day. Celebrate. Go to your husband. Go to Rasulullah. This is a farh, big thing. Aisha said, La wallahi, inni ahmidullah wahduhu la sharika lahu. I'm not going to go to him and I'm not standing up for anybody. I'm only going to praise Allah. And that goes to show the aqidah of Aisha. Rasulullah is Habib, but Allah is Ahab. Rasulullah is Aziz, but Allah is Az. Ummat al Islam. What happened to the aqidah in Islam? Where Allah is more important than his creation. Rasulullah is her husband, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Bakr is her father. Her mother, Umm Ruman. They're from the makhluqat. She heard something from her husband, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that she didn't like. Something from her father and her mother. She didn't like. You'll never hear from Allah what you don't like. Never, ever, ever. They say, Ya Rasulullah, take for your ring. Take for your ring a stem. Wear a stem so that you can show the people that the letter came from you. He said, okay, write on my ring, Muhammad Rasulullah. He could have written it, Muhammad Rasul Allah. He said, no, put it like this. Muhammad at the bottom, Rasul in the middle, Allah at the top. Allah shouldn't be below Muhammad. Allah shouldn't be equal to Muhammad. Some munafiq, the munafiq, Abdullah ibn Ubay, ibn Sulul, the one who instigated this fitna, and another incident, he was bothering the companions, saying stuff. Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, he said to the companions, Ta'alu bina minasta'in bi Rasulillah, and I have a munafiq. Come with us, come with me. Let's go get Rasulullah to help us against this munafiq. Make it sti'ana. Let's go, let's go. When they went to the Nabi, the hadith said that the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, innahu la yusta'anu illa billah. You shouldn't seek help from anyone other than Allah, Abdullah. Don't go to the sahir. Don't go to the magician. Aisha radiallahu anha, she had that quwwat al-iman and quwwat al-shakhsiyah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'al Allah ta'ala tawfiq wa sallam. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi ummat al-islam. I know we went past the time. I just need two minutes of your time. Two minutes extra inshallah of an important point. Don't let anybody sit in this audience and he thinks wrongly. Why didn't the Prophet have husnadhan for his wife? Husnadhan. Allah said, the Nabi said, Don't speculate. Don't speculate. Because usually when you're speculating, it's wrong. You have to have husnadhan for the believer. You meet a Muslim for the first time, you have to believe he's praying. You have to believe he's practicing religion. You can't meet someone and think the worst of them and you don't have any delil. My wife is in this masjid with me right now, like some of your wives. I have no doubt, inshallah, any man who tried to get close to my wife, do something like that, she's going to tell me. Because I know her. I have husna then. That's my opinion about her. Do you think that Aisha, the Nabi, didn't feel like that about Aisha? You yourself feel like that about your own wife, your own daughter. You think the Nabi didn't feel like that? So don't be of the people who they allow the Rafida to take these issues and to trick you in your religion. In the beginning of the hadith, the Nabi came to the Masjid Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the people were talking. He said to his companions, Man ya'dhuruni fi rajulin adani fi ahli wa la aliman ahli illa khaira wa qad adaw rajulin saliha lam yadkhul ala ahli illa wa huwa mai he said to the companions in the masjid who from amongst you will help me who will come and help me to deal with this munafiq who said this about my wife and he hurt my wife and he hurt a religious man I only know good about my wife and the man that he's talking about so if one of them walked up, I don't even know good about me. He never went to my house except he was with me. Who will help me? Some of the companions said, we will, Ya Rasulullah. And then the others were going to fight them because some of the people, they were the Asabiyya, the Kabaniyya. So when the Nabi saw that they were about to fight, he said, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. That's a proof and that's a delil. He had a good opinion about his wife. But he's not going to put himself forward when there's no delil, no wahi. Lastly, I have to mention this. This is not a political chuppah, but I will I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. You know this problem in Syria? 
This problem in Syria is connected to this hadith in your aqeel. That non-Islamic regime, the kafir hakim of Syria, that man is killing innocent people, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. And the, one of the ways that he's killing them is he's getting weapons from Iran, from Iran. Those people who believe Aisha committed zina, and when their Mahdi and Muntadha comes back, he's gonna raise Aisha out of the grave and give the hajj to her. That's what they believe. And in Yemen, there's a place called Damaj, people of the Sunnah learning their religion. There are a group of them called the, Huth the Huthiyyod. They are killing the Muslims who are learning their religion. In Al Iraq, that problem in Iraq instigated, helped perpetuated by the people of Al Iran. So it is not permissible for you sitting there, you, 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 to see someone like Hassan Nasrullah from Lebanon, Hezbollah, to give a talk, and then you come and say, that's the Mujahid, that's the Mujahid. And he's saying that about the mother of the believers. The Aqidah of Al-Islam is above everything else. Know your Aqidah and you'll know who you are friends with and who you should be an enemy to. And Nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhu. We ask Allah Ta'ala to put us in the Jannah for the dose where we have no doubt Aisha is there. We ask Allah Ta'ala to put us in the place wherever Aisha is and those people or her enemies put them far, far away. We ask Allah to establish our feet firmly upon the Kitab of the Sunnah and make us of the Ansar of the Sunnah and Nabawiyyah. Aqmas Salat, Yarhamakumullah.